everybody, this is Lisa Gollum Art and I'm just happy to uh, be giving you a tutorial on my very first Tutorial Tuesday. The idea being, we can have two tutorials. I will do one more extensive, either a paint and sip tutorial for beginners or I will do an abstract tutorial for beginners. Something you can do with friends or something you can do yourself. And I will also be posting a smaller tutorial and it will just be on one simple technique. It will increase the complexity and the depth um, and the repertoire that you have. So there you go. So this is uh, hopefully my first of many Tutorial Tuesdays. And uh, we're going to, today we're going to paint an owl as you can see up here. He's a friendly little owl. I call him Harry. Mainly because his fur his fur. See? It's not fur, it's feathers. His feathers look like fur to me. So I call him Harry because he's kind of hairy and I hope you have a beverage because paint and sip would not be paint and sip without the sip part. And it's just as important as the paint part. So, one second. Cheers. <sighs> one more sip. If you're going to paint Harry, you will need black and white paint. I used uh, Windsor Newton Galleria uh, black. I will have to tell you, it was on sale, so that's the why it's the particular black I use. There is a lot of paint out there, a lot of brands. When you're starting out, it's not all that important. Um, I wouldn't say go out to the dollar store to buy your paint, but anything Michaels carries, even, even Artist Loft, which is their beginner level, it's fine. Um, in fact, I'm using white by Artist Loft, okay? I never paint paintings the exact same way twice. Same way you never should paint your painting exactly like mine or exactly like the last time you painted a painting. So art is about expression. It's about having fun. It's about being unique and being, being um, yourself. Um, so I don't want you to make it, make like white knuckle your paintbrushes and try and make it perfect because why would you do that? Perfection is overrated. <laughs> Just enjoy the process. Every time you paint, you will learn more. And every time you learn more, you will be that much more fulfilled with, with yourself as an artist or as, a, as an expressor. If the word artist scares you, call it expression. I'm just expressing myself with paint. It makes you sound so sophisticated and, and self-actualized, actually. I used to be a therapist, so you know, sometimes I will, things like self-actualization, those kinds of words will just like pop out of my mouth for no reason at all. Art is very, very therapeutic. So I want you to have a good time. So this is my palette, it's an old yucky looking palette. I've got black and white on my palette. I'm going to take my little brush and I'm just gonna take one thing of black, a black blob, with the black blob somewhere else on your palette. So I always, I never, I always have the main piles of the cover color and then I mix elsewhere. So once you get one black blob, you're gonna want like about three or four white blobs. And you're going to just stir that. Don't stir with big, huge arm circles. Just stir little bits. You kind of poke it, prod it. You're going for kind of a medium-ish gray. On the light side of medium is good. And just so you know, you won't see this. This is, this is what we're going to do to pencil in where things are going to go. Not, not supposed to show in the final product. So because you don't want it to show in the final product, air on the side of too light red blue to dark. So I'm actually going to put another couple big things of white in with this pile. Black can be a little bit of a bully. It can be aggressive in a paint mix. So as you can see, hope you can see, got a little bit of gray there. Once you get gray, 
and I'm just going to use this as a pencil, as one would rough in a painting. So I'm just going to spin it a little bit out of, out of that gray so that it maintains the point. And I'm looking at the painting up here and there's kind of like a round eye and a beak. I kind of want to just rough in where his head and his eye and his beak are going to be. So if you notice um, this line going up around, it's almost like a half of a figure eight. So I end that kind of that line above the beak sort of starts a third ish of the way down. Again, none of this stuff matters a whole lot. Every time I paint them, it's a little different. And this is drying. So you'll notice it's not covering well. I'm okay with that. Whenever you get kind of dry paint like that, just add a little bit of water, stir it in. You don't ever want the paint to run down, to drip down your canvas. So you're just gonna add water by sticking the brush in the water, back in the paint, stirring some water into the paint. Cause my paint is a little thicker, thick paint and drier paint doesn't go on as well. So now I got, like I see that little line there and then I go around and kind of rough in your eye. You'll notice I had to add water quite a few times. I like my eyes big, but you can change that later. This is kind of just mostly to get an idea where things are going to be. So then we're going to have the beak is going to happen a little bit below that. I'm feeling like I'm too far to the edge, so I'm going to move my eye over a little bit. Because you can do that at this stage, because you're just using light gray for this very reason. So there's the eye area. You see, I'm, I'm kind of feel like I'm sketching, right? There. Now I'm going to make a little bit bigger. I like my beak kind of big, but again, this is going to be something you can change later on. We're not committing to anything yet. We're just kind of getting an idea of where it's going to be. Okay, now that I got the eye mapped out, I'm going to kind of map out from the top of, of the beak here, just kind of map out a little bit of this, where his hand's going to be, just so you know, and then a little bit of a shoulder. So that's what we've got. So it looks ridiculous, but it just gives us an idea where everything's going to be. So now we're going to use that same gray to get our painting started. Not to write, we don't mix any more. We're just going to listen to this beautiful music and we're going to paint him a mustache because every good boy owl needs facial hair. So we're just going to go see from that, that line that's part of that figure eight. I'm just going to bring flick. So I'm flicking. I'm not pushing hard. When you push hard on a brush, you get a fat line and you also wreck the brush. So when you paint with the brush, it's kind of like a gentle flicking sort of motion or a stroking motion. So you stroke a brush. This is like our laying down our first color. This is basically a painting that requires just 50 shades of gray. That was intentional. I know. I'm a not a very good joke teller, but I try and pretend I'm funny sometimes. It doesn't always work. So We've got a little bit of a mustache happening. Isn't that cute? Cute little mustache. Then we're going to get this weird eyebrow thing happening above his mustache and up over his eye area. So for this, I'm going to go on the same sort of line as the figure eight kind of went in, but I'm going to use really short strokes and I'm not going to try and cover every bit of the canvas. It's kind of like you're just sort of making polka, but almost like dotted lines. But it's important the direction of the stroke because this will give the vibe of the direction that feathers are growing. All right, once you get it over the beak and you're up, up towards the eye, you can kind of let that eyebrow kind of go over the eye. And you'll notice I'm not trying very hard to make this perfect right now. This is just the first step. So a lot of beginner artists, they get, they white knuckle, they get so nervous and they're like, they think they can wreck it and they don't know how, and that keeps them from trying and from starting. You really can't wreck this at this point. It's just kind of getting the vibe. And this is like a medium gray. And when we're gonna detail with a darker gray, 
our black, and then finally with more white to make it pop. So, so it's, it's not over until it's over. All right. And every owl is a little different too. You don't have to make it the same as mine. It's right now, it's more about the direction of the brush strokes, like the mustache downwards. These are side to side. And you notice you have to load your brush often with, with the small brush, otherwise sometimes known as baby bear. Because I need my brushes. Little brushes like this are called baby bear. It's cute. All right, so then you got the kind of like the mohawk happening at the top. So we're doing little short strokes again, straight up this time. My paint's dry, as you can see from like the speckled look, which isn't a horrible thing. Like it doesn't mean it's bad to be speckled but I'm just doing short strokes straight up and down. You can go downwards or you can go upwards, whichever feels good for you. You can experiment, do it your way. Oh, I did it my way. Yeah. So really we're just getting a series of um, sort of gray direction of how things are going. Now we kind of do a little bit of an eyelash because men have eyelashes too. So that's just strokes that kind of above the top of the eye, just go kind of outwards to the side. And kind of halfway, a lot in the middle of his head, middle of his eye, we kind of go out more to the side. So you can see how the brush strokes are kind of all going up and, and over like this. And I'm not being careful. I'm literally could almost be totally drunk, which I'm not, but I could be, and it would be okay because this is just kind of the first step and it's all good, it's all good. All right, so now you've got a mustache, you've got an eyebrow, you've got a mohawk, you've got eyelashes, now you need a goatee. So below the beak that we've just roughed in, just make kind of like goatee kind of, so straight down and I would do these downwards just kind of coming up from the corner of the beak and going all the way down. And you can go all the way off the bottom of the canvas with these, or you don't have to if you don't want to. It's all good. Remember, we're just kind of doing the first stage of color. Basically, like I said, not 50 shades of gray, more like four maybe shades of gray. But just a little tidbit, the more, like, when you're painting anything that's supposed to represent something, like this is supposed to represent an owl, so good, good, good. So when you're painting something that's supposed to look like something, the more shades of the same color you use, the more realistic and the more depth that you get in the, in the, in the image. So if this was all just one shade of gray, it, you, could be, you could look at it and tell, yeah, it's an owl, but it would look very flat and very unappealing. By the way, I almost never paint the sides of my canvas because I usually make them black if I, if I paint them at all. So if you want to though, you can like extend the goatee and all of these other marks along the side, mustache, you can do that. And then just basically have the painting also along the side, just so you know. And then it's ready to hang on the wall when you're done. Usually I just, if I want to hang it something on the wall, I'll just paint it black with a roller, with a little roller. But just so you know, you can do that. All about you tonight, man or today, whatever you're painting. Uh, right now for me it's about midnight because that's when I'm hyper enough to shoot videos. So you get to know a little bit about my personality. I am a night owl, huh? Like Harry. We're both night owls. All right, so now that you've got the mustache, the goatee, the eyebrow, the mohawk, the eyelashes, now you're just gonna have the the facial hair. Like, he hasn't shaved in a while, so he's got lots of stubble. So we're just going to shape the head with all the stubble and hair that grows out. So we've got this kind of, all these lines that go out. Well, all of the, um, I was going to call it fur again, it's feathers, but it feels like fur. It feels like hair to me. Um, I'm going to make the hair kind of radiate all the way from the eye. Kind of like, have you ever painted a sun or drawn a sun with all the rays radiating from the sun? So if this was a sun, think of the, of the 
fur or the feathers, two F words, pick one, that's radiating out from the eye. Here, remember we had the goatee, and I'm gonna start and just kind of make a little, I'm gonna obliterate that line that we did for his head, to define his head, and just make some up and down strokes. You can almost color. They, everything is, does not have to be the same length. In fact, it's kind of better if it's not. to sort of put some feathers but to find that shoulder. I'm hoping you, st you still have that little triangle of white canvas right here so that you can see that that shoulder is defined a little bit. But you're just kind of putting some lines that way. Now with that same color we're going to do some tufts, some random tufts on his chest. Sometimes I will take the canvas and if you're using an easel Put the canvas on the edge of the lip, I call it, of the easel, to do the bottom bit of your painting. Otherwise, you're going to, like, if that lip will get in the way of trying to go off the edge. Everything you paint is going to go off the edge. It's in the painting of the canvas, because you don't want, otherwise it looks weird. It looks like something's not finished. So I'm just going to make sort of random little gray areas in his chest. Making sure that I do some that goes off, go off the bottom completely. It can be any shape you want. Okay, the first step is done. So we've got lots of gray. All right, so now we're going to, same thing. Okay, so throughout the, all those little steps that we just took with the medium gray, we're gonna do it again with a darker gray. So if you've got lots of gray left, you can just add more black to it. Or if you're like me, you have to kind of remix. You're gonna do the exact same thing when you're mixing. You're just going to make sure there's more black this time. So instead of one black and like five whites, we'll do maybe two blacks. And two whites. Let's try that. I always, I'm not a color mixer. I'm not a trained artist. I was self-taught. So the rule of thumb is as long as it's darker than what you had previous. And I put it right on top of the same spot because it can all mix in together. So we don't want to waste any paint that we already mixed. But it has to be su sufficiently because the next step after this one is probably pure black unless you don't want pure black in your owl. So I want to make sure it's dark enough that it's going to be kind of like between what we've got now and black. But remember, acrylic paint dries darker than it is when it's wet. I'm still thinking that looks too similar. So you kind of have to eyeball. Hold it up to your painting and say, okay, it's got to look darker than what I've got. How much black is that going to require? The key is this time, you're not going to put this color everywhere that you put the lighter gray. You're just going to decorate, augment, I would say. So, in other words, if you want to see that nice and close, the um, you still see some of the light gray underneath. And remember, we're going to end with white, so it will get brighter. For a little bit, this painting is going to start to look dark. But there's a little bit on there, and I'm going to stop because I don't want to, maybe one little. The lighter you touch, the lighter, you, when you just like graze the, um, what's that called? The hairs of the brush, bristles, brush bristles. Just graze them on the surface very lightly, almost like you're caressing the canvas. That, um, it makes it less of a fat, distinct line. So for example, if I wanted a fat line, I push on the brush and go like that, I could get a really fat line. See what I just did? And then, oh, she wrecked it. Nah, I can fix it. I can fix it later. Okay. But no, we, we don't want um, really big fat lines. So remember now we're gonna do 
those eyebrows. We're just going to do lighter touch. Like last time I pushed a little harder. So the harder, remember, the harder you push, the fatter your line. So for this step two, I'm not going to push quite as hard. Again, because I don't want it to take over. I still want to see the first color. So it's like you're augmenting or sort of decorating. Isn't it getting pretty? So you're seeing how that first gray is still showing. And then I'm going to continue with that goatee vibe. And this time when I'm going around the, the head, I'm going to kind of just be a little more creative and not... One of the things that's hard to not do is make all the lines the same length. And then you just get like a, a line. So if you want to just like really watch my brush, how I'm just kind of picking my picking my drama areas and leaving some less drama. And I'm not pushing as hard as I did with the first shade of gray. So that I'm getting finer lines and lifting up at the edge. So if you just if you do back and forth, sometimes it, it gets a little bit overwhelming, although you can. Like as if you're coloring with the brush, but I kind of like better if just doing little wisps one direction, either up or down, either one works. This is probably going to be a darker owl than I've done in the past, and it's just, I don't know why, I'm just in the mood to make him a little bit more dramatic. Like that one is kind of a little wussy maybe to me. I might put little bottom lashes on this one too, just to... Now, of course, we're going to do his um, chest, his chest hair, because every good boy owl needs lots of chest hair. So again, I'm not obliterating all the lighter gray, just kind of augmenting. I'm just playing, I'm really just playing. And there really isn't mistakes. Because I mean, I often do things that I don't intend, especially when I teach, because I'm actually not just thinking about painting. Well, normally when I paint, I don't think at all. When I teach, I have to think about painting, but I'm also thinking about how to explain things. I'm thinking of multitasking. I'm thinking of a lot of different things. So it's like, yeah. playing, making it my own today. See how much darker it is than the, than the original? By the way, I've taught this painting about, like, about 20 times, so there is really no original anymore. They just all kind of morph into whatever I feel like in the moment. Okay, so I think that's all that color taken. So now I'm going to go pure black. So before I go and do anything else, when once I got pure black, I'm going to actually do his beak. So that's just a matter of reclaiming that nice big triangle. Now with your black, we're going to again, starting at the mustache, now you're really going to be choosy and you're just going to put a little bit of black in the mustache. I mean, it's still want, so you want it to find different, as different from the uh, beak. If you put it all the way down to the beak too much, it'll look like it's part of the beak. The beginning of the mustache kind of has to have that distinct line. But you can fix that line with a little bit of black in the fuzzy eyebrow stage above the beak. Remembering with the brush strokes going side to side and being very short. And then getting longer as they go to the left. 
And then the eyelashes are going to really stand out. And I'm not going to do as many. Another thing you can do is if it doesn't feel like the right kind of angle, like it's easier for me to paint this way so I can do eyelashes a little better if I hold the painting upside down. I'm just going to put a few little darker area spots on his little fro <laughs> or his uh, mohawk area here. When you're moving the painting, it is a little bit tricky. You got to watch how you hold it. Okay, so darker black. All right, I'm going to do a little bit under his eye too, just because I'm here just a little bit. Then you're going to do a little bit in the goatee. I'm not going to put a lot of black in the goatee, just a little bit. Now you'll be able to see the difference between the gray I used and the black. And you'll see I'm being a little more choosy with the black than I was. And I'm going to just do wherever I feel led to do. more dramatic owls that I've painted because I've done this painting so much. That's why I chose it because I've taught it a lot. The reason I've taught it a lot is because it's very popular. People will usually really like it. So I decided to start with it but that's but I have taught it a lot because it's popular so maybe when I've taught a painting a lot I do get a little want a little bit more freedom change it up because I maybe get a little bored. Us artists don't like to do the same thing the same all the time. Very dark owl, very different from the other guy, but I like it. I'm thinking I'm gonna go up one size brush. I would call this one Mama Bear. So again, it's a little bigger. Same kind of brush, round, but a little bigger. So I'm going to make sure she's, she's been in the water, but I'm going to make sure I dry her off. So there's Mama Bear. She's still damp, of course, because you always want your brushes to be damp because that helps the bristles kind of limber up a little bit. Painting's wet, so you need to be a little careful. Like you can, there's certain spots you can put your fingers. I like, I come right up and I can anchor my little baby finger and I'm just going to fill the eye area in with this color. It's a little bit of an odd color for his eye. I don't know how well you can see it, but I like it. I like it. So I'm going to anchor my finger and then I'm just going to paint eyeliner. So a little bit of black all the way around. try and do the pupil. I don't know if I can because this paint is really wet. See, I can't. So now you know what happens when your paint is wet. Yeah. All right, so we are going to continue. So, um, with the white, I'm going to use Baby Bear again. Make sure he's clean. And got it. And we're going to take some white. And if you want to add a little gray into that white, you can do that if you don't want it to be extremely white. So, yeah, 
So mine's, it's, it's kind of, it's mostly white, but there's a tiniest bit of gray in there. So it's just not quite stark white. Again, it's your bird and you don't have to name them Harry or anything. It, you can do it in one. So you will notice now, my bird is dark. He's kind of looking now a little ominous. I actually really like a little curve in his beak, which was kind of intentional. So I, I, you know, I wanted to do that. So the white or near white will really, it will really brighten him. So I want to do it carefully though, because if I add too much white, then it would just like be bam. I would be like too much and you don't want too much. So first of all, I'm just going to put a little bit and you're going like, whoa, and just very little bit stroking very gently the edge of his And then I've got a nice little mustache all of a sudden pops because before it was starting to fade into the background. So too bad. And then this little area, I'm just going to do some nice layer. And again, we're adding to the complexity. And because that's kind of dark, maybe I want to lighten this quite a bit because I find my bird a little dark. And that's why it's hard to teach sometimes because your bird is going to look completely different from mine at the moment. So you might find yours is too light and you need to darken it. It's your bird. Feel free to do that. If that's what your bird is asking you for, I swear paintings talk to me. It's like they're like, oh, I need this or oh, I need that. I swear they do. I am not crazy. They talk to me. <laughs> So now I'm going to like, instead of keep going up, I'm actually going to come down with some of the lighter from the edge of the canvas. And again, painting is something that the more you do it, you just intuitively figure out what every painting needs and when it needs it. And it's just like, it's cool. I knew this needed to be lightened, so we're lightening it and I'm loving it. I'm not going to do much with this. Maybe just a little bit of detail, like like finer lines of white, just for fun. But yeah, I don't want to do much because I I want that to the, I want the eyebrow to look a little bit different from the rest. There, I've, I've quickly and I've made some lighter areas. You know what? And if I have to do the eyelashes over again, so be it. It's all good. Okay, now I'm kind of going in that whiter area. I'm kind of going both ways just to kind of lighten it a bit. I don't want to lighten it all, the whole bird, to, but I want to lighten him a little bit because he was getting a little bit depressing and a little bit ominous looking, which isn't a bad thing if that's what I wanted. And I, wouldn't, I don't mind him being a little ominous, but he was just a little more ominous than I wanted. So, you know, I'm just kind of lightening some areas and kind of going in that area around the eye that's lighter and lightening it a little bit more. with acrylic you can layer as much as you want and I find layering really is amazing for creating depth you might not see the layers that I see that's okay I 
I really like this. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to add a little highlight to his beak. And that's what you can do whenever you don't have much white left on your brush. Because you don't want a lot of paint. It's just kind of subtle. So the rule of thumb is when you add water, it becomes more flowy, but also more transparent. So when you want it to stand out and be drastic and bam, like an eyeball is black, you don't want a lot of water in that. So now I'm just going to use Baby Bear and I'm going to play with my eyelashes with pure black a little bit because I've lost a few of the defined eyelashes. I'm going to bring my canvas kind of up and I'm going to make sure just to side where I want some really extreme eyelashes and I'm almost having to load the brush for every lash. Creating a little extra drama. Yep, keep loading the brush. Lots of little lashes. Well, I'm going to add the light in the eyes because you'll notice eh, it's kind of dark. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dry it as much as possible on my towel. Do it on your napkin, whatever you got handy. And I want pure white this time. I'm going to get baby bear totally loaded with white. Now, you never get baby bear loaded with alcohol because that'd be evil. But you want lots of, almost like a clump of white paint on the end of baby bear brush. And this takes a little trust. You have to trust that you're not going to mess this up. So it's like a little C shape. So you're going to put your hand close to the metal part of baby bear. So you can get, it's almost like a pencil. And I don't know why, but I always put my highlight on the left side of the eye. You can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to, my eyeball is dry, my iris, I mean. So I'm going to rest my the pinky there. Get lots of, pinky, pinkies are great because you can like stabilize them wherever there's dry and a dry area. And then I'm just going to make a little, almost like in a backwards apostrophe. A little bit of light in his eye. And yeah, because the black's a little wet, you really have to be careful just to set down the light. And it's a very light touch. Now, if it mixes with the black and turns a little gray, that's okay. There's the new Harry. He is much darker, dark boy. Has beautiful eye. So as you can see, they're very different, but same painting. So see, you can do that too. And I'll just give you a little tour of my studio. I always have art on my walls. I have lots of supplies and paint. I have lots of supplies and shelves over here. I have Rock Studio on the wall. Those are in progress all over there. And more supplies and a table and more art. Here's another version of the owl. So kind of halfway between those two. But yeah. Lots and lots of fun. And see, I'm Harry too. I never did mention my boa, but you know, I am weird. I don't like to talk about how weird I am. Why well, yeah, I do. As you know, with COVID, I used to do this for a living in restaurants and bars. I can no longer do that. So this is still my way of making a living. So I would just really appreciate if you would support me totally voluntary, um, but I would love a donation. And please like and subscribe to this channel for all the new tutorials that come out every Tuesday. 
and I would love to continue to see you. Please comment below, ask me any questions you would like. Um, I'm new at this online thing, so let me know if there's anything I can do that would help be more helpful. So I hope you enjoyed our little foray into Harry the Harry Owl. And I hope you join me again next Tuesday for Tutorial Tuesdays. So, um, love you all. Mwah.